Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I've got some really exciting news for Unreal Engine developers. Those specifically waiting for Unreal Engine 5, it just got a step closer today. Now Unreal Engine 5 was first announced in early access back in uh, May of 2021. So we're looking almost a year now, we're looking 10 months out uh, and we've moved now from early access to preview. So we are now in preview edition. There have been a number of improvements to Unreal Engine since the early access release. Basically, it seems like Epic Games just don't want to use terms like, uh, I don't know, alpha and beta and release candidate and so on. So instead, we've got early access and now we have preview. But basically, this is just a more advanced version of Unreal Engine 5. And frankly, let us jump in straight away. By the way, this is Stacklebots you see in action. It was uh, at least three or four months back. It's a demo project showcasing uh, Unreal Engine 5 features in a very learnable manner and we're going to showcase some of the exciting new things to get used to with Unreal Engine 5. Now first off is the updated user interface and I have to say since Unreal Engine 5 was released going back to 4.x is painful. I just like, I like this dock, I like the auto hiding of the dock, I like the way the user interface looks, I like the little UI tweaks, I like the, the ugly um, stack bar thing is missing now. Uh, it's just a much cleaner UI experience on the whole and I definitely like that. But there's also some other major features here. Uh, one of the ones, and, and this is something I pluralized both of these, there's Lumen and there's Nanite. And I'm going to call it Nanites and I'm going to call it Lumens because my brain is wired weird. But those are the two major features of Unreal Engine. Now, um, Nanite you can see in action in this demo by looking at these rocks. Nothing really magical about them, but these are really high resolution um, photogrammetry scanned rocks. So uh, what it allows you to do using Nanite is you can use basically as high of polygon models as you want and Unreal Engine takes care of all of it for you. Can you think, okay, well, is that just an LOD system? Well, breaking it down, yes, basically that's what it is. But it's just a very elegantly mannered one. So you, in theory, do not need to worry about polygon budgets anymore. Now, if you use, say, 200 million polygon budget rock in your editor, uh, it's still when it's generated for your platform of choice, so when you compile it for Xbox or Unreal or Switch or whatever, it's going to be a much lower polygon count version of it, but you don't need to worry about that. You just author your really high resolution version, say in ZBrush or whatever, or your photogrammetry scans, and Unreal Engine takes care of the, um, the difficult tasks of creating lower resolution versions to target your platforms of choice. So that's one of the major new features here. Another nice one we have here is this world partitioning. So you can see right here, I've loaded this quadrant in, but if we want to go ahead and bring in more of our map, so we've got different components of it over here, you can right click and load that cell in. It's a nice way of partitioning your world into multiple different spaces. Uh, that was another new feature that was added. And we've got one other new feature, and I think this is because I ported from early access same of Stacklebots to preview version. Uh, okay, basically, a, a bit of a warning in effect. If you are sensitive to photo light, look away because Lumens is a little messed up right now. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn Lumen on. Now, Lumen is basically a real time global illumination system. Uh, you basically can just set your lighting and it takes care of it all for you, the performance. But as you can see, it's also a little tad on the psychedelic side of things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn uh, Lumen back off. If you want to see, by the way, there are views here for looking at Lumen scenes and how they're going to interact. There's also tools here for looking at Nanite visualization and how your world is composed. So you can you can basically look in a certain area and see the various different um, high definite like high density triangles that are being used the raw uh, elements and so on by the way if you do run into problems with lumen lighting calculations basically go to lighting features and turn lumen global illumination off and the problems go away again I, I ported this project over i imagine if you started from scratch it would probably work fine so if you're interested in kind of getting to terms with new features of unreal engine 5 uh, stackobots is probably the place to do so because it's a smaller example than the valley of the ancients and it, it's more, it, it's a full game that is featured at showing you and onboarding you to using Unreal Engine 5 and the new features, such as World Partitioning, Nanite, and Lumen. So that is Unreal Engine 5 we saw in action. Again, I really like the UI updates here. Now let's go back over here and we shall take a look at uh, what is new in the preview version. So again, it's been close to a year in the mix. So we're going to look at what is new. Nanite, we already talked about, it's the virtualized geometry system. Basically, it's a really powerful LOD system. We've got improved performance and memory usage, new error-based metric for fallback mesh creation, user uh, um, 
UI to batch convert assets to or from Nanite and perform on-disk data trimming, support for all view modes and usage flags per instance selection and per instant actor customization data. And then we got Lumen, the new global illuminations and reflection system. It has full hardware ray tracing support, which does not require distance field or any other software tracing. Um, improved final gather quality, uh, especially visible on, <coughs> oh, sorry, something in my throat. Uh, glossy reflections on translucency, um, translucency, translucency, final gather, landscape support, all in there for uh, Lumen now. Uh, virtual shadow maps have stability and performance improvements, improved uh, shadow and validation due to uh, moving or deforming meshes, support for more non-nanite mesh types, and support for more material types for... <coughs> Uh, two-sided and subsurface. On the path tracer side of things, this was introduced in 4.27. The DXR accelerated uh, physically accurate progressive renderer, uh, support for hair now, support for eye shader uh, model, and improved uh, in, in the uh, sampling BDF model, light transport, supported geometries, and more. Uh, world building, this is the world partitioning we showcased it, where you can split your world up into a grid, make it kind of easier to work with, lighter in the editor and so on. Now has landscape support, sequencer support, new streaming uh, source shapes, uh, VT support, uh, virtual texture, I think that one, uh, in minimap and hierarchical support in data layers and a new UX. Uh, one file per actor is a new system enables multiple team members to collaborate on the same scene level uh, simultaneously by saving data for instances of actors in external files. Uh, and this release focused on improving stability and quality. Um, new large world coordinates. This is actually kind of neat. If you're trying to do something like No Man's Sky, uh, you're probably going to like this one here. Kind of uh, in addition to moving to the use of double precision values under the hood, we focused heavily on performance and memory optimization. That means that your worlds can be very, very, very big, basically galactic scale. Uh, so you're looking at 64-bit uh, data sizes. So yeah, they get quite large in, um, in your, how you can express your coordinates in the game world. Um, animation improvements to the control rig, uh, new uh, distance matching and pose warping, new animation blueprint templates, new IK rig and IK uh, retargeter features. Meta Sounds is their uh, audio system that they built. I think it was in 4.x, it was first available in beta. Basically, they've created their own new built-in low-level audio system called Meta Sounds. Uh, in preview one, you can now compose meta sounds within other meta sounds similar to materials. There's new support for user-defined nodes. In addition, you can now reuse graphs using presets, which are references to shared meta sound graphs, but with new custom default inputs and settings. Also features an interface that enables them to more deeply connect with gameplay code uh, and the world they are in. So that is kind of the, uh, the big new things there. If you want to grab it, it is available. Oh, it's hidden right now. All right, let's bring it up from down here. Come on. Oh, that's Unity. That's the wrong one. Epic Game Launcher. Uh, you find it here. Basically, go to the Unreal Engine tab. Uh, go to your library. Add a new version. As you can see, I've already added it in. By the way, when you do add something in, just a top tip. When you're about to do the install, uh, make sure you go to the options for it. So if I go to install... You go to options, you're going to find it's going to install a ton of stuff that you may not necessarily need, especially if you're just evaluating it. Come on in here and turn off engine source, for example, and all the various different platforms, and you can turn this install way down in size. You can get it down to about 10 to 12 gigabytes in size by stripping away stuff you may not need. So when you do do a new install, make sure you go to options and prune it down. It does not have to be gigantic. So... Um, Something to be aware of. So it is available here now as preview one. Um, if you want to go ahead and check it out. The other thing that I mentioned a couple of times in this is the Stacko bots. I did a video on this in the past, kind of walks through what it's all about. It breaks down a number of different features, including Nanite, Lumen, Meta Sounds, all being used in that example. It's probably the best onboarding experience right now for learning Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so if you're interested, do check that out. I will link to this page. So if you want to go in here and grab it, you can do so. But ladies and gentlemen, Unreal Engine 5 is here. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> preview. So we're still waiting for Unreal Engine 5 to release in full. There's a number of games basically being developed uh, in Unreal Engine 5 already. Uh, again, that's generally not a good idea when something is a preview, but a lot of AAA studios are working with Unreal Engine 5. So hopefully you can too. Um, it's definitely... Uh, Again, once I've used Unreal Engine 5, going back to Unreal Engine 4.x is really, really painful. So let me know what you think of uh, Unreal Engine 5, of Unreal Engine 5 Preview, and everything else. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.